Hello, welcome back. I'm Ashley Krieger, a full-time traveler, artist, and the teacher behind createflart.com. And today I'm gonna to share with you why it's important to explore and how that expands our options as artists. And while we do that, we're gonna paint a lovely sunset on the beach. Let's get started. Let's begin with our basic supplies. So you just wanna have a surface to paint on, your paints, your paint brushes, some water, and a paper towel. I have colors already on my palette from previous lessons because this palette keeps my paints wet. It was one of the things that we discussed in the first lesson. So if you wanna put just new colors on your palette, that would be fine. We're just using the colors that I have listed. So I don't think I have magenta on my palette, so I'm just gonna add that to my palette right now. If you don't have these colors from the previous lessons on your palette, go ahead and add them now and then we can begin. We're gonna paint the sky and its reflection on the water. So with my wash brush right here, I'm gonna add this magenta color to the top of my canvas. While we do that, let's start talking about how exploring expands your options as an artist. This simple act is what helps you learn and grow and that is what expands your options because it is the more that you know, the more that you can do with the knowledge you have. All right, so let's take this magenta color and we're gonna create the reflection down here. So it's gonna be an exact match of what we do above it that we see down below it. The sky's reflection will be on the water. And I don't really worry about making it smooth right now. I just wanna get the paint on the canvas. So let's think about the teachers and the mentors that have been in our life, that have helped shape our life. I mean, even if we didn't exactly want to have them shape our life, sometimes those people in our lives do influence us. And there will always be good influences and bad influences, but it's the good ones that we can hold on to and that they help us progress, right? So as we learn things and we grow from the people who are before us, we start building upon their knowledge and they can inspire us to become the people that we are meant to be. So let's go ahead and wash out our brush and then add some blue to it. Go ahead and add that color to the top of the canvas over the magenta and those two colors are going to blend together. Of course because it's reflection whatever you add at the top you add to the bottom. Now I'm showing you a choppy brush stroke look that you can get but you can also create a very smooth sunset. So let's explore what the different brush strokes can give us. I'm gonna clean out my brush here, dab it on my paper towel, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm grabbing the white and I'm gonna add it right below or right over the top of the pink. And I'm going to create this crisscross look here. So here I'm getting kind of this choppy look. This is more of an impressionistic look of a sunset. And I'm just playing. Now I'm gonna take that color and go side to side and blend it. And notice how the blended look is a completely different way to play around with my brush strokes. So whatever I do up there, I'm gonna do it down here, of course, so now I have to smooth that out. So now I'm gonna grab this orangish pink color. This color I mixed for a previous lesson, and really it's just the red, yellow, and white mixed in to make this salmon color. So I'm adding that above the pink magenta that's now turned into mostly just a mess of those two colors together. And I'm blending going side to side. Now I'm gonna add some more magenta because that color's changed and I want it to be more of a, a magenta color than a purple color. But this is a great time to add in your own personal preferences. And if you like the purple color more, leave it there. You could even add more blue up there and have some blue, whatever you do, just make sure that both sides match. This is a great time to be creative and I always, always love to see that you guys are creative and creating your own unique art piece to you. You can always use the steps to create something unique or follow right along with me. I will always encourage exploration. That's just the type of teacher that I am. You can learn a lot from the people around you, including this opportunity that I have to be your teacher. You can learn from me. And you can also learn a lot by exploring things on your own. It's a little more risky, but you can learn from your successes and your failures that way. I'm going to put a thicker band of the salmon color than the sky. And that's because the ocean or the water down here below, there's gonna be more of it than the sky. So I'm just gonna take that up just a little bit more until there's just this middle band right here. 
that's not in the exact middle. And anytime you want to adjust your colors, so I'm going to add just a little bit of magenta here. And notice how I'm using my brush. I'm using the edge and I'm going to create some streaks in here. So I'm just adding in the streaks of the water. So these are like little ripples in the water. And I can add even more streaks by adding different colors over the top of the colors that are down. So here I'm going to add some blue over top of the magenta and just go side to side using the edge of my brush to create these little ripples. Anytime I feel like it's too harsh, I just go over the area starting to blend it, making it softer. The more I blend, the more I'm going to get rid of those streaks. So just be careful you don't over blend and then you can always add what you want back in. So let's wash out our brush so that we can have a clean brush when we add the white. Now I know we have white in our canvas already, but this is going to allow the color that we add over it to be a lot lighter so that we can just blend those colors right in to the salmon color as well. So this is the lightest part of our painting. and We wanna have wet paint to be able to blend with. So I'm going to add just a little yellow to the corner of my brush and see what color it gives me when I blend it in. I can add a little bit more yellow to the other side of my brush and do the same thing. So now I'm just figuring out how far that yellow goes with its color. And then I added a little bit of water to my brush to see how it blends those colors together when I have a little more water. So I'm exploring what the water does and what this yellow does to this area of the painting. So what I'm trying to do is get this really, really shiny part of my painting. I want this sky to be glowing. So I can start lightening this salmon area just right here down at the bottom and pulling that white color into it. I can add a little bit more salmon color and bring that color down. I can leave some streaks in my sky to make a hazy look or blend them all out to make it look like a clear day. I can leave it like this or add more yellow. Of course, whatever I add in the sky, I need to add the reflection in the water. So I'll leave a band of white in the middle and then I'll add yellow on both sides of that band just so I can see that I'm creating some symmetry is what it's called. Symmetry is when the sides match but we're not making a perfectly symmetrical painting here because the sky is a little bit shorter than the ocean water. So now that you've seen what the yellow does on top of the white, notice how that yellow glows more. So one of the things that I learned while exploring and learning from other teachers is I learned that yellow is more saturated or bright when you add it over white instead of mixing it in with white. White dulls the color down. So if I were to mix my yellow with my white on my palette, instead of putting the yellow over the white paint, I would get a much duller yellow. So that's why exploring is so important. Now I'm going to add some of this yellow as streaks in my water down here. And I can add also some of that salmon color and then it makes it look like there's little waves out there, right? I just love how a few little brush strokes can make something look so cool and start making it look like something. So now we're going to paint the sun. Grab your round brush and add white to it. And right here in the center area, just above that white band in the yellow, we're going to go in a circular motion to create a small circle. But you can create however big of a circle you want. This is the sun, so yours can be bigger than mine or it can be little doesn't matter. I just want to make sure that I make a pretty good circle, that it's a circle and not flattened on one side. So go ahead and take your time. I'm going to take my time doing it. Now we're going to paint the sunset's reflection on the water. So just add some white to your brush and right below the sun, you're just going to create some lines going across. And they can be different lengths and you just keep going down your canvas right below the sun. Make sure to leave gaps in between your white lines and your lines are about the width of the sun. I'm going to switch to my half inch brush here. Just add some horizontal lines just right where the water meets up to the sun. 
and I'm doing this and it's going to make it look a little less calm, the water less calm. So you don't have to do this if you don't like the look. But I just want to have some more contrast there so that you can see the white of the sun a little bit more. So I'm just using colors that are in my sky. So I have a little bit of the orange. Yellow would work too, even some pink. So whatever you want to do, I'm just going back and forth, kind of just making a squiggly line right through here. And then a little bit over my orange as well. And I pulled a little bit of the light color down there. Didn't even mean to do that, so that's great because it just <laughs> added to it. So if you need to grab some of the lighter orange or that yellow on your brush, then you can do that. So basically I'm making this water look less still like the, the water is actually moving more. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to keep putting in the glow of the sun on the water. So notice how my lines are really choppy and sometimes it just looks like dots or blobs. Well, that is because this is the, the light sparkling off the water. So to get the sparkle look, it's very inconsistent and just sometimes there's little tiny dots. And that sparkle on the water will come all the way down the canvas to the very bottom of it. So I just make sure that every line is a little bit different. I'm wiping off a little bit of the white on my brush because it's a little chunky. And let's just take these lines all the way down. So when there's a little bit of a wave, as you can see right here, you can take some of the little dots and then go across the wave. You know how when you're looking at water and it sparkles across the wave, that's what we're doing. So while we do that, let's go ahead and talk about some things that we can explore with art. So one of the things that we can explore is our own style. We can figure out what our preferences are, what kind of art we like, and the more we expose ourselves to different types of art, the more we'll realize which ones we prefer over others. There's many artists out there that I enjoy their work and they inspire me. And there's a reason why I like their art. It pulls me, it speaks to me in a way, or I resonate with it. And this doesn't happen with every art that I see and especially every art style. I don't prefer some styles over others. And that's why it's important to explore other art and other artists. That's why I include that in my art lessons. I also think it's important to explore different styles of art. So not all of my tutorials are just one style. I teach about abstract, realism, and all the styles in between. So I hope you take the time to explore those things so that you can expand your options as an artist. So on my sparkles on the water, I'm just going to pull up in just a few areas, add some white to my brush and just have a line come up in some of the areas so it looks like there are sparkles on there. And I just add that to a few of them right here down at the bottom ones because those will have a little bit more detail. Things that are closer to us have more detail so we can give the look of that or the impression of that basically in our paintings giving the appearance of depth. And that's another great thing to explore as artists is how to create depth and composition in your painting. So basically everything that you put into your painting and the way you arrange those things, that's called composition. And you can figure out how you like to present or play around with composition. So let's just wipe off our brush and then add some magenta to it and write where the ocean meets the sky, we're going to create an island here. Just start on the left side, making a thicker area, and then come towards the center with a thinner area coming down. So it appears like a hill on the left side. And then I add a little bit of blue down below to be a shadow area of the island. For this particular island, I'm just going to make sure that the bottom is nice and straight across. The top I'm going to make jagged or wavy and I'm going to make it pink. So it just appears lighter like the sun's glowing on that island. And as it comes over to the right I'm just going to separate just a few of the little lands. And then I just come in here with the edge of my brush and I'm just adding in some darker magenta areas. Maybe it's bushes or trees. This is just a detail you can add it if you want so you don't have to. Then right underneath that is going to be the shadow area of the island. 
because the sun's behind it. And so basically I'm making that shape, exact shape, right underneath it. So this is another lesson on symmetry, which has to do with composition. And I'm leaving just a little bit of the yellow right between those two shapes. You can make them exactly symmetrical, but I'm just gonna use pink and leave it like this. So let's go on to the next step. Now let's paint our palm trees. I'm gonna use my flat brush in my black and over here on the left, I'm just starting from the bottom, making a curved line, meeting almost all the way over to the left side. So you can make this as curved as you want. It just curves around the sun. So I'm gonna start here at the top to show you that. Basically, at the top, you just create these spider legs coming out from a center area. And this black line is going to meet up to that. And then you fill in the area. So you can make it as thick on the bottom, but you want to have it thicker on the bottom because it's a tree. You could even make the black tree go all the way over to the left side so you're not seeing any of the ocean behind it. So I'm just going to show you that we do the same thing on the right and then we'll finish up the one on the left. But there's a composition choice here that I created. So right above the sun, I have one of the palm tree fronds. So then I go from that area and I come and make a spider, like spider legs basically. And I want to make sure I don't cover up my sun. And then the trunk comes down and meets over to the right side. Then I can make the trunk as thick as I want. It just needs to be thicker on the bottom. I can bring that line and thicken it all the way so that there's no ocean seen behind the bottom part. Or I can leave a little bit of it showing. I've had both ways in a painting similar to this, so it looks good both ways. But the key to the composition of this painting is that we're basically using these palm trees to frame in our focal point, which is the sun. So it's leading our eye to the sun. I always like to teach my students the reasons why I do things so that they can kind of understand why I create the compositions that I do and the choices that I make and why do I grab this brush over this and that stuff too, you know? Why do I like this paint over this paint? You know, you don't have to choose the same things as me, but when you understand why I make that choice, then you have a better understanding and then you can decide whether you want to follow that or not. Because when you understand things and you know the reasons why, it, you actually learn more about yourself and you learn more about why things are done the way that they're done. And so you can rebel against that or you can decide, you know what, I actually like the look of that I want to follow that and I want to kind of do that in other paintings as well. So it just teaches you more and helps you to understand more so that you can discover your personal preferences. And in the end, that's what we're trying to do is discover what makes us unique and what unique things we have to share. So fill in your trunks and then create some blobs right here in the center of your spider legs and you don't have to have exactly eight legs. <laughs> And don't worry, we're not done yet. That's not how they're going to look. And you don't have to have these lines perfect. Palm trees are fun. They all look different. They don't look perfect. They are shaped kind of weird sometimes. There's, there's one palm tree that we actually walked on because it was over a river. And it literally was bent in the middle all the way over to the river. So you know, it doesn't matter the shape of them really. You don't have to get hung up on this. But the great thing about acrylics is that you can always go over things and fix it. You know, I've been painting for years and I don't expect myself to not make mistakes. So, or just to not like something and decide to change it. When acrylic paints are wet, it's easy to wipe them off with a wet paper towel. And then um, also if something is dry, it's easy to just go over with the other color. Sometimes I just add white and then I'll go over with the other color so I don't have to add so many layers. So now grab your round brush and black and we're going to work on the palm fronds. So basically you're making lines, just very straight lines, trying to keep some gaps in between if you can. And then just pulling down and making them a little bit longer as you get to the tip. 
So short lines near the middle and then longer lines as you go down. And this isn't about going slow and making anything perfect, okay? Because palm fronds, man, they get beat up. So <laughs> they don't look perfect. So as long as you have some kind of line and you come towards the tip and create a tip on the very end, then it'll work out great. Most of the time palm fronds are facing down unless it's really windy or they've gotten beat up just a little bit. So this one's kind of poking over to the right, but still those lines are facing down. So this one, I will do it facing down, but the other direction and my lines will be more vertical. You can also have some of the lines going on the top. When you do that, just see how it kind of made it look messy, like that palm frond above the one I'm working on. So having that little bit of messy look, that's actually kind of how they look. So you can do that in just a few of them and then have some that are just going down. And then that'll give it a more realistic look. Or you can have perfect ones with these lines that are perfect. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because that may be your preference and you may like that look more. So just play around. Again, explore. And then if you don't like something, just wipe it off. So now I just add that to this other side. So see how loose I'm being with mine? This is the way that I like to paint. I actually like painting loose and that's just a personal preference. So here I'm just adding a palm frond that's kind of going wacky and then I'm gonna add one right here. And anytime you wanna add in another palm frond, you can go ahead. Just don't uh, cover your sun because that's a composition thing and that'll be sad if you take out your focal point. So see how I just made some of my lines going a little bit more to the left and crossing over in the center and then some going on the right. Just kind of loosen up, loosen up and let things um, go. But if you like to be tight while you paint, then you can look at some palm fronds and really like copy what you see or you can copy what I see or you can um, make them look a little bit more like a cartoon, which is what will happen if you make them look really, really perfect. It's, it'll look a little bit more like a cartoon, which is fine. I mean, there are so many different styles out there and we all have our own preferences. And that's why, again, it's so important to explore and you may decide that you wanna explore different mediums. There's so many out there to choose from. You know, I tried uh, painting on glass for a while with a special kind of paint and love that. You can also use acrylics to paint on glass, by the way. And that's why I kind of chose acrylics is because I like the versatility of the acrylics. You can paint pretty much on anything you want. I started painting with oils and I loved oils and that's why I prefer the heavy body acrylics. But again, there's just so much to choose from with acrylics because you can choose the heavy body or the soft body or more of an ink and that's the acrylic inks. And you can choose acrylic gouache that has more coverage or you can paint like this where there's some paint colors that are more transparent or see-through than others. There's just so much to share with you about acrylics. Sometimes I use my acrylics like they're watercolors. I just love them. The last step is always adding the final details based on your personal preferences. So your painting can always be done by this step with me or if you decide you want to make changes, this is the time to do it. I have to say, I really enjoyed sharing with you and painting with you today. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments and I will answer them for you. And I have painted it in all kinds of mediums, not just acrylic, so you can ask additional questions on other mediums if you have those as well. It was so fun to explore with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun. I hope you had time to relax and get creative and that you come and learn more from me. And I'll see you in my next tutorial.